Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning to you, whatever it might be. <laughs> it is uh, currently one o'clock here in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Lou, how's it going? EJ, yep, here we go, Lou. We're on another uh, mission. Today's live stream brought to you by none other than the uh, Miss uh, Slabby Shaw Benson. Uh, Slabby will be running commentary from the back of the vehicle today. She will bust in intermittently with her thoughts on today's progress. Hi, Slabby. Can you say hi? That's right. Hey, everybody. It's Slabberina. Bocomo, thanks for being here. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, she's a doll. Aurora. Aurora will be a mod. Aurora Transparency is in the house. I want to make a little announcement today. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. But the reason uh, we're on a mission is because we have to go into the lion's den. We have to go into very hostile territory. Remember, it's war. Uh, we never know what these damn cops are going to do. We never know whose uh, balls are going to end up in their throats and they're going to throw fit and arrest me and blah, 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 blah. So this is going to be a long stream. I'm just going to announce right off the bat. We have to go check on some people. There's nefarious activity occurring in uh, some particular parts of District 2 and 3 that we need to go take a look at. These are DPD districts that we're referring to, if you're curious. So we're going to be in Districts 3, 4, and 2 today. And then uh, we're probably going to make a trip into Inglewood again as well. We've got some issues that we need to pick up and uh, resurrect. Uh, a week ago today, you saw I was on a mission in Inglewood, which ultimately ended up me going to jail in Denver at District 3 because O'Neill, Dirty Sergeant Boy O'Neill, he's just, uh, besides being a, a rotten ass, dirty fucking cop, a piece of shit tyrant. He just can't get a grip on himself. And he is one unpredictable mofo right now. So you never know who's going to pull out a gun and just shoot you dead on the spot. I would venture to say it's going to happen with a cop long before it's going to happen with any unhoused person out here that I have contact with. Okay. So there's, there's the honest truth. Uh, you cannot trust these fuckers an ounce. We know that. So, you know, Regan plays nice for a while until you turn into a, a tyrannical dick and then you're going to get treated like one. And that's what's happened with O'Neill, Sergeant O'Neill. Uh, he's been caught on camera multiple times, multiple times behaving badly. He targeted another activist, had her sighted when three campers were towed. Uh, we've got body cam footage of him using his vehicle to move a woman along. Uh, as he orchestrated having all of her belongings thrown in the trash. Uh, O'Neill's had to listen to me, yip, 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 insult his stupid intelligence nonstop. So ultimately, O'Neill, you know, couldn't wait to orchestrate an arrest inside of uh, Denver District 3 a week ago today. We'll talk more about that later, but that shit's on the back burner for now. Just know that, you know, O'Neill is out here, District 3. This is a sergeant that tells all these cops what to do, and they do it. So um, that's why I got to run this live stream. I typically don't like to do these live streams. Uh, they're long, they're boring, but, you know, it's documentation. I could do them every day. <laughs> um, nobody sees the real work that goes into trying to advocate for people to get them in a better position to get them off of the street or simply protect their right to survive while hurting no one. So we got a lot of issues going on right now. And the reason for all this rogueness in the Denver Police Department, not that they aren't rogue anyway, but they're exceptionally rogue right now because of the mayor's race. So the current administration, Hancock, who's been mayor for uh, like forever, like 10 years of total destruction for Denver, 
Um, he's out of office. He's term limited. So there's going to be a mayoral runoff on June 6th. It's between two candidates, Kelly Bro and Mike Johnston. And I will tell you that us advocates have met with both of those candidates. Um, they claim to really want to take a compassionate approach to homelessness. Uh, I tend to be more in line with Mike Johnston. Um, Kelly Bro has the full on endorsement of all the police unions, the fire unions. I mean, she's a hardcore. She's been in the fray of the authoritarian Democratic mix involved in the previous mayoral administration with Wellington Webb. And so she's got a lot, a lot of connectivity to those people that absolutely hate how the homeless look on Denver. Mike Johnston is a little bit of a different story. I know Mike uh, from his time in education. Mike Johnston is single-handedly responsible for enacting legislation in Colorado that actually holds educators accountable in the public school system based on student achievement. So I do know a lot about Mike Johnston and he did commit to meet with me in me, us, the advocates, within the first 30 days of him taking office, should he win. I feel quite confident that Mike Johnston is going to win, uh, but that doesn't mean shit because those deep, dark money people do a lot of underhanded shit to get their people in office, and Denver's in a really bad, bad way. And if Kelly Bro won, it wouldn't surprise me entirely, but it would definitely indicate some uh, <laughs> interesting ballot counting activity, in my opinion. <coughs> Slabby has something to say. She sees a dog walking across the front of the vehicle. So will Mike Johnston end the sweeps? He's got a far better plan for the first six months of office than Kelly Bro does. <laughs> Kelly wants sanctioned camps, but she wants to do it compassionately while enforcing the camping ban. Uh, Mike Johnston hasn't fully committed to, uh, of course, not enforcing the camping ban because that's what the voters of Denver say they want. Something like 80% of Denver voters uh, reaffirmed their love for the camping ban, the right to not sit or lie in any public space. Uh, it is a continued constitutional challenge that attorneys continue to work on. But in the meantime, you've got other municipalities and other counties within Colorado enacting their own camping bans because of the growing homelessness population in Denver, Cow in Denver, Colorado and the surrounding metropolitan area. It's not getting better, people. It's getting much worse. Um, and government does have a lot to do with that, believe it or not. So you can form your opinions from behind a computer and behind a camera, but until you get your ass out here on the streets and you really start meeting people where they're at to see where you can get them in a better position, you don't know shit. Which takes me to my next topic of conversation. And if you're not taking notes, you should be, because this is very important. So last week, on Monday, you saw some live streams and a video of Sergeant O'Neill with an unidentified man that he was essentially parading around into areas of homelessness while putting the homeless population on display for a, po a parade. That's exactly what it was. And apparently Sergeant O'Neill has decided I believe on his own. I'm still waiting for a records request to confirm that Sergeant O'Neill and his unidentified sidekick followed process for a ride along because I didn't know that the Denver Police Department was into giving ride alongs and armed escorts to certain individuals who have an agenda. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, it's good to know. Um, your agenda must fit their agenda and it must be for the greater good of evil. 
okay? Now, my agenda would never fit their agenda for a ride-along because I would be out offering services, resources. I would be understanding what's going on with certain individuals if I was going out to a camp to meet them or going into areas of homelessness. Well, it turns out that unidentified individual with Sergeant O'Neill has now been identified. And it's very important that you take notes on this because this is in fact going to be an up and coming issue because this individual is the founder of what I call a hate group. If you ever want to put labels and tags on things, here's one to label a hate group. They are called Citizens for a Safe and Clean Denver. And their founder is Craig Arfston, like Arf, 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 A-R-F-S-T-E-N. Now, Craig was with Sergeant O'Neill and the reason I ended up out there live streaming that was because they made an extra special effort to go try to start a very hostile interaction with one of the other advocates. That advocate was approached by Sergeant O'Neill with this man at his side. They proceeded to interrogate her. Um, essentially tell her that she didn't know what she was talking about. And even Sergeant O'Neill admitted to this advocate that he didn't even know half of the processes that existed when they're criminalizing the homeless. And then Sergeant O'Neill went on to talk about how this advocate had been committing crimes and blah, 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 blah. So, of course, you know, I'm just a tad bit defensive and protective of the work we do out here because it's important because it's for the people. It's not for the government. It's for the people. So I went out and live streamed that. I initially tried to give Sergeant O'Neill and his little buddy the opportunity, <coughs> the opportunity to present <coughs> that they were in fact out there to do good. But as you can see from the video titled a defensive Sergeant O'Neill, he was up to no good. And he got called out on it. And then he got called out on it again 15 minutes later with his buddy Craig. Now I gave Craig an opportunity to introduce himself and give us the lowdown. What are you doing out here? Us advocates, we're very protective of our people. And if you come out here and start fucking with our people, we take that very, very serious. And that's exactly what these two were doing. They were using all of these political messages that Craig Arston and his group want to perpetrate onto the people that us advocates are pro-tent extremists. That's the language he uses on his website. And that we want to enable people into homelessness. And that we want to enable them deeper into addiction issues. You see, when Craig started this group, he was declaring war. And we were giving him an opportunity to show that, yeah, the city is actually failing at a lot of things. But Craig doesn't want to do that. Craig wants to use the city and authoritarian force to push his agenda. So of course, Craig got an armed escort out here. So O'Neill could put our people on parade for this fucking scumbag to do who knows what with. How much video did you make, Craig, of our people? How many HIPAA violations did you allow to be committed out here, Sergeant O'Neill, you fucking scumbag? See, so there's a rhyme and a reason for everything we do and all the layers that we peel back to understand the enemy. They are the enemy. They proclaim they want to be the enemy against the people. They know nothing about the people. They've never met the people. They've never even understood their situations. You are an enemy. You'll be treated like an enemy. So, because I have great people that dig into things, we have identified the unidentified man through facial recognition. And this guy runs a financial investment firm. 
Imagine that. Craig Arfston's a financial advisor. Yeah, I wonder who his clients are. Hmm, let me think about that. Hmm. So Craig makes videos and productions for his uh, financial investment group. And Craig, he wears a lot of makeup. True story. The guy puts a shit ton of makeup on before he gets in front of the camera and makes videos and shows up to city council meetings. Yeah, Craig, we've been watching. We've been watching very, very closely because we understand political agendas out here. Yes, we do. We understand deep, dark money. Yes, we do. We understand that we advocates... <laughs> Slabby would like to say hi. We advocates understand that we are the very, very vocal minority out here. We understand that we are behind the eight ball against political power and cops with guns. We're not stupid people, you see. So I wanted to give you all that background before we venture out. And perhaps who knows what we're going to run into, right? Does anybody have any questions about who these people are? Phyllis, O'Neill was following you after that contact on live stream. Overheard it on the phone call I made. Interesting, Phyllis. Interesting. Hola, shits and giggles. How are you, my friend? Clinton, how are you today? Dirty pigs up to no good? Really, that's a shocker. Thank you, MM Note, for making note of Craig Arfston and his hate group, Citizens for a Safe and Clean Denver. Yeah, he's got a whole page dedicated to advocates. He's got a whole bunch of labels and titles for us. A whole bunch. Brandon, how are you? Good to see you. Indubitably, hi. Good afternoon. Last name of Craig? No, Ray Nation. First name Craig, last name Arfston. Arf, Arf. A-R-F as in Frank S-T-E-N. Craig Arfston. He is the founder of Safe and Clean Denver. Hey, Alan, how's it going? Thanks for being in here. Glenwood, City Awareness, how are you? Belinda, how you been? So if you want to get caught up on today's stuff, you'll have to go back and watch the stream, but we're going to venture out. This may be a long and boring stream, but I have to go live because I don't know what these dirty cops and uh, whoever their uh, agitators are that might be out here as I go check on some people. We've got nefarious activity occurring by the Denver Police Department because they're rogue, because they have zero oversight. Their command staff, I'm pretty sure, are all on vacation. You know, it's the holidays, it's Memorial weekend. So you gotta take the week before and the week after. So you got a bunch of cops running rogue out here, trying to enforce shit that legally they can't enforce to include the camping ban. We've got a one Ed O'Connell out here in District 2 trying to enforce the camping ban just by slapping up a sign. Doesn't work that way, Ed. You know better, you little fucker. But he's doing it because he's getting away with it and nobody's catching it on camera. So once again, we're in a situation where the cops get away with all this bullshit because nobody is recording it. So most of what we're going to do right now is going to occur in the car. And Slabby's out for her ride along today. Slabberino, and we're gonna get some weather. It's been thunderstorms. Oh, there's the one I want to check on. Lo and behold.
Okay, I apologize. I'm not trying to run you over. Hey, babe. I need you. I know. Are you okay? My phone is completely broken. Slabby, this is not the time. I know. You too. This is breaking. Are you with the city? We're just with the star van. We were just coming to You came from Star? Anything. Yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Who called Star on you? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know. They just showed up. I, I, Romeo! They just they showed up earlier and told me, clean up my mask. They fucking. Who showed up and told you to clean up your mask? This guy that walks like this. Where was he from? Here. From this business? Yes. And so they made a call so to the I, cops? So I, I, we, we, all we had was the tent, and that was it. Yeah, I, I got it. Romeo! You have all your stuff? I have everything right here. Right. Josh went to go see Pearl. I'm waving my, my phone the next evening. Did a raindrop hit my phone and it's completely done. I can't even use it. So Josh gave me a phone. I put my SIM card in it. I don't know if it's going to work, but these people are helping me out and they are charging it for me at least. Are they? Yeah, so they're going to come out because I've met them a few times. I've been tortured for so long. I've been trying to fight. Honey, I am live streaming, by the way, so just okay, so yeah. you're aware. I have to. It's just for no, everybody's it's protection because yeah, I don't know what up, the fuck like, everybody's going like, like, to like, do. Does, does Star have any resources for you? I don't know. Let me ask. So this is another service in Denver yeah. called Star. Yes, what, what kind of stuff can we help out with? Well, for one, she's got to be able to have a way to communicate, so we got to make sure she's got her phone. Um, what are you What are you offering, maybe for shelter, strictly women? So we can connect to the area shelters. Um, and my, I have my dogs, no matter what, too. So yep. Are they ESA? Um, no, he's like wants to crawl. I know. Um, they are just my dogs. Mm. I rescued them from a guy that used to abuse the heck out of them. So, and I've had him for four years and they're my dog. So, I mean, that's all I can say. My sister decided to put him out of town, got them tagged, shipped, and they are all up to date on their shots as of like two days ago. Yep, they're we're fully aware of sister, that. But they're my dog, so they're all up to date. They're everything. I totally appreciate Star Response. I really, really do. But for Crisis, we just don't have like those immediate options for our friends like Lindsay. So, I mean, I, I don't know what else you can offer her. Yeah, we're aware that there's a lot of gaps in the system. Yeah, you are, I know. I know the STAR team is aware of that. They sent the ambulance by here last night too. They drove by with the things on and they turned them off. They saw me and Josh trying to put up the tent and they busted a UV right here. And then I looked at us like, what a waste of time. You could tell. Who you called know, an ambulance on you? This guy in a white truck with these red spokes, because I could see him on the phone, and you could already know. I'm not dumb. He drove by like 17 times, and then some guy drove by and shot at us. Or we're up in the air right here, right, right, right at us, right here. In a white car with black windows. Yep, this shit and, is and, getting and, bad. And they, they're both driving together around even today, and they talk to these people right here. So they're all in like cahoots. I, I've been on this street for two years. Like I, but the protection rep people are really trying to help me. They brought me a lunch. Do we? Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, hon. Do we have any connections to host to put Lindsay in a hotel? Now I don't know if you know her story, but Lindsay had her home taken right here. She was just yep. That. So uh, DPD connected her with four nights of motel, and host was to follow up with her, and they didn't, and so she's back out on the street. So we need to reconnect her with host. Do you know who you O'Neill, Sanchez, and more. Well, those and were I, the cops. Yeah. Those were the cops that she and dealt with. Jolie, but Jolie and Riley and... Um, from host. Yes. Uh, Jolie and... Um, not Riley, but Jolie. Jolie and... and uh, Ryan, I want to say. I know Riley's their boss. But Jolie is the one I was text messaging with. They came and saw me at the motel. After. But they never came back, and no. they never extended. They never I ex called. I, I could show you. Take, oh, my phone's broken. But I, 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 I reached out. I called. I called O'Neill. I called Santa. I called more. Amy called. We yep, called multiple I know. times. We called multiple I know. times. I know. So yeah, I mean, if somebody can get 
well, you need to get Riley on the phone from host to I don't have direct connections to host, but I'm nobody my supervisor. Could you? And he has more direct connections. Um, and see what, what the mishap was and why no one has been in contact. Well, that'd be awesome if we could like try to do that right now and see if somebody can get somebody from host on the phone see why the ball got dropped on her anyway i mean she had a home denver stole it and then they just left her to stand here to die they left me like two minutes to kick out everything i had, I had a pile of stuff right there and they were like bye and everything out there and then, and then, and then this business told me i had 24 hours to get off the property will you hand this lady my card please yes i need another one too there Mine you go. got wet and it's kind of messed up. Yep, yes. there you go. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Lindsay, where's Josh? Um, he had a little parole. He did get out then? Yes, he got out. He got a hold of me yesterday. Ha and um, he got out. He had to go to parole and then to go get his food stamps. And he was going to come back. But they had already told me to leave, so I left him a note. Like, so you were here by yourself and all this shit went down? Ground. I literally, literally left this where we were parked. The law told me to kick rocks, yeah. so I packed up. And I was just gonna did. I'm right around the corner. Somewhere. I'm trying to charge. Because he said H2O. Okay, we both don't have phones. We will find each other. Is he coming back here? Yes, he's coming back here. He's on a skateboard and slash looking for bus fare. His when do you think he's at noon? I don't even know what time it is. It's you amazing. you can't be out here by yourself. It's 1:30. He should be back. <clears throat> I, I know he's coming back. I know he's coming back. I know he's coming back. I just don't know exactly when he'll be back. And I know it won't be like hours and hours, but. I mean, you're, you're not safe out here. I mean, something's gotta give. I don't have a problem putting you in a motel, but I'm not putting Josh in a motel. Okay. I mean, there's some shit there. There's some shit there. I mean, I, that dude's threatening me up here on the corner a year and a half ago. You oh, know, I was it Josh? Josh was? Yes, it was oh, Josh. Oh, he did. Yes, he, he did. He about, behaved very badly. He's he's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't. And I understand that. You know, you don't. Uh, you just don't threaten violence against the people that are working to. Uh, he's just as aggressive as you are, but in his own way. And he yeah, but I'm not that. violent. Yeah. I'm not violent, and when you're threatening violence gets a little different, Lindsay. It just does. I I'm not trying to upset you. I know. So. That's his friend that's standing right there staring at us, you see him? Okay. Five minutes and we're into crisis. I told you. This is Lindsay. You watched all this go down right here in this area on a live stream when O'Neill and more and Sanchez came and stole all their homes and told them to kick fucking rocks. Oh, here they are kicking rocks. You got people threatening violence against them. You got the star team out here. I love the star team, but they're, they are armed with nothing except to come out here and be the buffer in between the cops and the people that are struggling. They gave me a granola bar and a t-shirt. Star oh, did? Well, that was nice. I, I mean, he, this is Josh's friend and he's like, I think he fakes weird. I don't know, but he won't leave. I just told him to leave. Lindsay, leave. you're not safe out here by yourself. You absolutely I, 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 are not. These people at Protect the Rep, I'm, they're wait, I'm waiting for them to go on their break. The lady in there is very, she's, I, I can't compare her, but like, like you, very aggressive, very, she is, um, when I was parked right here for a year and almost a year and a half, she has helped me with a few things with Orlin, with Orlin yelling and screaming. She went over there and she kind of grabbed him and threw him across the street and got him away from me. She saw my buggy tip over. She ran over there. First one to run across the street through traffic and helped me pick everything up. I forget her name, but she was just out here. She brought me a plate of food. She's the one who offered to charge my phone for me and she is going to be coming out here again to bring me my phone back. She came back and said, is that 40%? She goes, if you're willing to wait, I can get it to 100%. Because Josh gave me a phone. He was like, here, then take it. Because when we were walking over here, he got in a fist fight. Well, this guy honestly did start it. 
And um, Sheridan police came. And they asked it was as we wanted, but Sheridan was like, "No." You were in so Sheridan we, when this went down. But we were walking. Um, I was over. He was when he was still in jail. I um. I thought he wasn't getting out. I thought he that's took what a I deal thought too. To that's finish. what I thought too. And he and I got a weird call. I well, a call from his phone, and then I called it back, and there was no answer, no answer for like three days. This was on Wednesday. I, and my phone's completely broken. One raindrop hit my phone that same night. When I showed you it was kind of messed up. Right. And it was done. And um, so he I called me the next morning. I saw my friend Kirby, and he was going to the Essex. And I didn't know how far that was. We got on the bus, and it was like all the way in Littleton. Right. So I was like, Down shit. Santa Fe. And then as soon as we got there, they're like, oh, we can't have no dogs here. So he was like, well, you got to find somewhere to go and put your dogs. So then I was just put out there. Right there, immediately, my phone was done. My phone was done. I couldn't get a hold of you. I couldn't get a hold of Amy. And it was like middle of the night. And then so, like by the next morning, my phone I could answer it. Someone called me, but that was it. And jo and then we we're I couldn't even see it. I answered it, and it was Josh. I told him where I was. He showed up. Same time Kirby showed up, and it just turned into like it looked like I was fucking him and fucking him, fucking him, you know. And and it wasn't even that situation. I couldn't even explain it to him. Lindsay, you are him. not property. I want to make that. You need to get this through your head right now. You are not these fucking guys' property. You understand me? I don't have a problem putting you in a safe situation. But that ain't it. And I don't want none of them motherfuckers around you if I put you in a motel. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't disrespect you like that. I wouldn't. My dogs, my dogs are freaking out. Like, they hate it. Like when he was human. Well, you can't blame them. My God, you had a home, and all you've done for the last two to three weeks is fucking get kicked around the whole goddamn city. Well, we this were, makes me so since we were first fucking here, mad. My ex boyfriend is the one that kicked Flynn in the face. They sent an, a an animal ambulance for him. So when they were fighting even yesterday or day before yesterday, <laughs> Flynn was. Like, he has seizures. He was like freaking the fuck out. But here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put you in a motel. And I already talked to you about the one I'm going to put you in. I'm not putting you at the okay. anchor. Okay. And you know that... My sister did come see me yesterday too. She brought me... She's... I told you she's like here and there. She brought me... She's like, here's your mail. And it's like from December. Stuff that I needed to see about this like victim... I'm, I was appreciative, and she gave me five dollars, and um, yeah, and that was about it. But like I saw her yesterday, I told her about my phone. And she says I'll look into it next month or so, and that was it. And then he got a man threw a phone at me and said, "Here, have this." Again. But me putting, but me putting you into that motel is a temporary fix yes. unless we can activate something through host. I called my supervisor and I sent him a message to see if I can. If he has any contacts with hosts with the names that you right. given me. She's got to get off. The, she can't be out here. She's not safe. She's just made it very clear to me that she's not safe. And I am live streaming. I'll have you know. You're not on camera. Your voice is. I'm not identifying you. But this has been a very serious issue out here with her. And nobody, nobody is taking it serious. So if, if I put her in a motel, if my nonprofit puts her in a motel, what is Denver going to do to connect these services? I know this isn't your fault. I hope you understand that we both understand each other. But you guys get sent out here so there's not confrontation with the cops with these folks. That's what's next. These people keep calling the cops. So is your supervisor going to call you back? I called him and sent him a text. So yeah, I don't know if he's in a meeting or anything right now. Are you going to wait? I can wait. Or if you all want to move along and try to get out of the rain, I don't, I, I can't stay on here for the rest of the day, but I'm happy to give you a call when he texts me back. If you want, would like that, if there's another way to contact you. Well, I, she gave you my card, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So, I uh, I can't put you in the car right now, and take you to a motel. Well, I, I gotta wait for them anyways to do my phone out, and I'm okay sitting right here for right now. 
they're they're watching me. They they kind of know the situation. Does and does this dude need to be told to I go told away? I told him to leave. Yeah. Here, give him a Walmart gift card. It's fifteen dollars. This is a bad situation. Do you mind waiting to see if we can get some connectivity with host? And if you can confirm some connectivity with host, I mean, I'll come back and take her to a motel. Host isn't gonna put her in a motel today, but I want a commitment from somebody that they're gonna follow through with taking her home from her three weeks ago and stuffing her over at the anchor and never following up. So what? What was the expectation of follow-up? Well, I called, I called, I called um, Detective Sanchez, um, and I called him and left him two voicemails on his desk. Um, hold up, Lindsay. Hold on. I know what she's asking, okay. and so I want to rephrase it to you. The interaction that you had with host. Host is... So okay. those, those were the people that came to talk to you about resources. Oh. When you mentioned the boss. Okay. What did you guys talk about, and what was left? Okay, so we were, me and Josh were getting change ready. We were going to try to get to my storage. And and we're in the middle of change. We're trying to hurry up because Don or whatever his name is, the asshole that runs that shit, was rushing us because he made us check out every day and then check back in. So we move everything out, move everything in. He's like playing games with us. So I was trying to get dressed. They knocked on the door and it was for you. And I was like, for me, I don't even want to go. Who knocked on the and door? Then, host? And, um, the host, yes. And it was Jolie and I want to say Ryan. Okay. I think it was Ryan. Okay. And, and I could overhear them. And then I, he was like, it's, I was like, I don't even want to talk to him. I don't care. And he closed the door. He goes, they said it was about housing. And I just kind of, I heard, so, I heard, I heard the word housing. I wasn't paying attention, but I heard something. So I was like, fuck housing. I threw a t-shirt on and I went out there. And then they talked to me about nothing about housing, nothing about anything. They did help me read, set up my um, SNAP benefits over the phone because, um, it had expired, they had to reapply, and that was it. That was it. And then, so they got your food stamps yeah, reactivated, and, they, and, and it redid it. But then, when my, my wallet and everything got stolen after that car got hit that we were staying in, I, I don't even have a new snap card yet or nothing. I haven't, I didn't have a phone, I didn't have anything. So, last I understood was Amy was advocating for, for you for host to continue to follow up with you. Yes. And they she told called, she even called Jolie to see what Riley had said about it, and she was the one that got me that extra day. Amy did an extra day, yeah, Amy and then did it for it. host told the other advocate that they weren't going to do anything else yeah, for it. Jolie was like, "I wish I could show you those texts on my phone." It's not my phone was broken. She was like, "Sorry," and she put a sad face. Uh, Riley's my boss, and that's who we went through, but that's all we can do. Um, hope everything looks up. So. Riley is the point of contact in this that's make that had made the decision from host. Yep. Not to pursue any other type of safe shelter for her. That's where we're at. Um and I call I did call O'Neill, I did call Santa, they never called more, but but Amy was on top of all that. Well calling and, the and, cops and, yeah, and, for, oh, and they, but they but they had promised that day that they would get me to the yard to get my stuff because they knew, I told them my ID is in my right. ID. And now they're saying they can't because they're pushing it past the 30 day limit where I can't get in there. So they took a lot of her belongings, including her ID. However, I've reordered her ID. Yes. So she'll have but her she, ID you soon. Saw, they gave me like five minutes to get everything I own out of, a, out of my RV and somebody else's RV. Two RVs worth of everybody's life and they gave me like five minutes to get it out. And it was all on the sidewalk, and then they're like, bye. In the, and it started, that's when it snowed. 
I know. Snowed on us. So did whoever Amy is, does she have a the phone number? It's like she had the phone number from someone. Who I don't calls? have any numbers. My phone is broken. You, she has Amy's number. Um, I do have Amy's number. However, it's in this phone, and I'm not sure I can get it right away. Your dog is adorable, by the way. Hang tight. Yeah, Lindsay, I can't I know, I support know, I that. I just can't, and, and I and, won't. And I've had a big heart with Josh. Like, we were, like, like really good friends until all this stuff started happening, and I understand we're all going through Ashley's being a bitch to him. He's taking out on me. It's and you not need to my get... fault that he has 17 kids with 98 people. Yeah, and exactly. some of them don't want him around. You can't... Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, you got to get out of that cycle. Once in a while, and we're really just friends. And last night, he took it, like, pretty fucking far. That's not okay. Screaming in my face and like, I'm like, we were both, he, he goes, you don't understand how I feel. I go, I got my house taken too. I kind of understand. We're on the same page, maybe different paragraphs because you're on another Yeah, level. but you're not their property. That's yeah, the and difference. I, and you know what? Last I checked, we're both grown ass adults. We're going to restart this live stream. Okay. I got to get into my phone. I'll be back in a little bit.